YouTube is full of vlogs of people's first weeks of their 75 day challenges, but what happens after the excitement of the first week wears off and you have to keep up with your new habits? Well, I'll tell you how I'm doing halfway through my 75 soft challenge. The rules of my challenge are the following. A daily 45 minute workout, eating healthy, cycle syncing my meals, drinking 3 liters of water, no coffee, reading 10 pages, taking a progress picture and learning Swahili vocab. Interest. Must lie. We are halfway through 75 soft challenge and I think in the intro you got all the necessary info of how I am going about this challenge. So I'll just go straight to going through the different rules and uh, how I've been doing, what's my success rate, some reflections and maybe some course corrections that I might need to make. First one, no coffee. Since I do not drink alcohol already, I decided to try a no coffee challenge. It's very easy to get a coffee, but honestly, it's quite easy also to not get a coffee. So <laughs> this has not been a challenge at all. It's uh, my success rate is 100%. This is not a no caffeine challenge. I do drink tea. Uh, actually, I've been drinking a lot of Kenyan tea lately because it's been gloomy and rainy and cold. And with that, let's uh, bring some awareness of what's happening in Kenya. So a lot, a lot of people here have uh, been displaced, have lost their homes. Some have even lost their lives. There's been major floods in many different parts of Kenya. Here's some footage that my boyfriend captured a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, I just wanted to bring this to your awareness in case you're not hearing about it in international news, maybe. I'll write down a couple of names of uh, organizations that I know take donations. Back to coffee. I think it was the second week of the challenge when I headed to Healthy You, the like health store, and I got myself a coffee alternative. That might have helped. And I recently found out that the restaurant CJ's makes excellent decaf coffee. I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact that it's a Somali-owned chain, because I know for sure that Somali coffee really hits. <laughs> I once drank it with a group of friends in Finland, like in the afternoon, and the following night, all of us were texting each other like, is anyone asleep? <laughs> and everyone was kept away by that coffee. And I remember I rearranged my entire room like with a heavy bed and a wardrobe. But maybe their decaf also kicks. <laughs> Why I would want to drop coffee is because I felt like I was getting addicted and I don't want to be addicted to anything. And also uh, excessive caffeine is not the best thing for women's hormonal systems. And that is something that I've been working on with myself. You'll actually hear more about that later in this video. Next one is water intake. I'm just showing off my nice bottle, not sponsored or anything, but I love this brand, Green Thing Kenya. They have like a zero waste type of concept and uh, it's a metal bottle and that's how I like to keep my bottle. I'm quite into low tox lifestyle and not that into drinking from plastic bottles. So yeah, I love this. I'm tracking my water intake very loosely because uh, I am pretty much 100% certain that I am hitting my three liters. I really feel like I'm drinking enough water. So yeah, this has been pretty easy for me and I'm sure that a nice bottle that you carry around makes it much easier. And I know many of you are not drinking enough, so take a sip. Many, wengi, wengi, mix, kuchangania, spoke, alizungumza. Learning Swahili. I have only missed a couple of days simply because I forgot. I did uh, study this uh, set of vocabulary also last year, but I somehow fell off. And when I restarted going through the vocab in the beginning of this challenge, I felt like I was only remembering a few words here and there. And I've definitely moved forward from that. Actually, my boyfriend has been testing my vocabulary every now and then, like pointing at things. What is this? What are you doing now? And uh, he's been impressed. The app that I use is called Anki. Anki is not specifically a language learning app, but it's like a learning app. It's a spaced repetition software. I have a separate video of my Swahili vocab learning process if you're interested to hear more about that. Okay, let me show you everything that goes in in this one. So we've got 
the fresh things, raspberries and some kale, could be spinach also. Scoop of peanut butter and this date syrup. I didn't have banana, so this is my sweetener today. We have collagen, what? then oat milk, a mm, couple of oats as well, cacao powder and seeds, pumpkin and flax. Looks plain, but <laughs> has a lot of things. All right, so eating healthy. I feel like my diet is pretty healthy, so I wanted to challenge myself to be even more conscious about eating at least one uh, menstrual cycle phase appropriate meal per day. So that's called cycle syncing, where you see where you are in your cycle and you adjust your diet accordingly. So this is also something that I've been loosely tracking. I feel like I'm pretty well on the course because um, every time I make a grocery order, I am aware of which phase I am in and I order ingredients that are suitable for that phase. So obviously the meals that I end up making will also be suitable. If you've seen my cost of living video my grocery bill is a bit excessive food is a bit like medicine for me now that i have a better idea and rhythm of what to eat in each phase and each week i could maybe start finding a bit more affordable options and obviously this definition of eating healthy for me is to adjust my hormones because i've struggled a little bit with that and i feel like it's working although i think more than nutrition it in fact has to do with the next rule This is the first time in months when my cycle is actually a healthy length. And the last time this happened was when I was subscribed to a gym in Finland. And because the subscription was so expensive, I was really using it a lot and going many, many, many times a week. So I think what I'm starting to learn is that my body needs a lot of exercise. And you can clearly see that I don't have a 100% success rate with this one, but there's been a lot of improvement. There's a couple of days that I missed just because I failed to schedule in an exercise, but it has had more to do with my extremely low energy levels in certain times of the month. On top of missing days, I would say that one has to be quite generous to call some of my workouts workouts, because sometimes I've literally just done 45 minutes of uh, stretching or went for a chill walk or I've maybe written on YouTube those like lazy girl slow floor workouts like 15 minute videos and I've just done three of those but you know it's something I truly do not know what type of workout I'm supposed to do when I'm in this state like sorry no And I want to say this as a form of encouragement, because even with missing days, even with very low impact workouts occasionally, I feel like I'm really, really benefiting from having a more conscious approach to moving my body every day. If I manage to fix my cycle length and hormonal issues, most of them, in just like, what, 35 plus days, I think that's really amazing. I have established a weekly gym session with my boyfriend, so that's been very motivating. I know that I will drag my ass to the gym at least once a week, usually more. I've also been taking pretty much weekly walks. I think I want to schedule in a weekly walk with my boyfriend as well. Okay, so...
I have the lowest success rate in taking a daily progress picture because a picture taken on some arbitrary date when I am maybe approaching my period and super bloated, like I don't think that's the thing that will motivate me going on with this challenge. I, I just don't find that it does much for me. For somebody it might be very motivating, especially if you're losing a lot of weight with this challenge. But for me this challenge is more about body composition. So in the beginning of the challenge I had a chance to take like a body composition test and I'm planning to repeat it at the end of the challenge. Pretty much everything else was okay but my uh, fat percentage is too high so I think for me it will be much more motivating to actually see what the result of that will be at the end of the challenge. I'm pretty happy with how my body looks so that's also not a huge motivator for me. For me it's much more motivating to know that my organs are not surrounded by excess fat. <laughs> the next challenge has been to read 10 pages every day and uh, I think this has been my favorite part of the challenge. So I finished the book Keep Sharp about building a better brain and I have a video of one of my 75 soft weeks where I specifically paid attention to living a brain healthy lifestyle. Uh, I've also been reading this book about embodied creation. I am, you know, I'm a creative of a sort. So, I mean, I have a YouTube channel <laughs> and I, you know, I want to create more in my life. So this is a more, you know, mm, spiritual approach maybe. I've been reading Codependent No More. Honestly this is one of the best books I've ever read. This is another book that I have finished during this challenge, uh, The Ultimate Glow Up Guide by Alicia Gogan who's maybe my favorite YouTuber. So uh, I haven't done the journaling parts yet but this is an amazing book for you know girls especially a little bit younger girls who want to like stop self-sabotaging and living a life in their own terms and glow up. Books like these also, you know, inspire me to tap into my girlhood <laughs> every now and then. And I think my next vlog will be related to that. I'm also reading this book Outlive about longevity, you know, about exercise, food, <laughs> very 75 soft related things. Yes. I've also been making notes of all of these books. I use my Notion second brain. I also have a video of my note taking and life management system that I have built. Me taking notes means that there will probably be a lot more content also coming uh, inspired by these books. So the biggest impacts of this challenge have definitely been fixing my cycle length. That's huge. I mean, wow. <laughs> and we are only halfway through. I have also inspired my boyfriend, who's not a big reader, to listen to an audiobook. I think it's pretty clear also from my selection of books that my interest towards uh, physical and emotional well-being has really strengthened. And I see that well-being is something very much in my reach if not already embodied in the way I live. This is something that I would think will take me far. I feel like as a side result of this challenge I've also become better in taking responsibility and taking care of myself. I found myself you know doing random head massages to calm myself down. I booked a reflexology massage. I've been to an inner child workshop. I felt more detached from my problems and I feel like I've even started exploring more of my purpose and how I want to spend my time in this life and realize that when we heal ourselves we also spread the healing into our surroundings. So what is happening now is that I am packing this uh, Brain Keep Sharp book 
for one of my viewers. I do occasional book giveaways and he will get this book in this super sturdy tote bag by Pogna Martin who sent the tote bag to me. So we'll spread the good stuff. And yeah, I think you can see there's been a plethora of benefits uh, with this challenge for me so far. And I'm excited to do the second half of it. And I already know the new challenge that I'll do after. So stay tuned, subscribe. Thanks for watching again. See you. Bye.